For almost 50 years, Earth-orbiting satellites have helped us understand much about our world and ourselves. As the technology evolved in those early years, it was thought that satellites might provide mankind with another benefit, one that could tip the balance between life and death for mariners or air crews in distress. In the 1970s, researchers and scientists from the United States and other countries began exploring the use of satellites to provide support for search and rescue activities. The idea was the satellite going overhead, any point on Earth would be seen at least four times a day. NASA believed the answer to using satellites for search and rescue lay in developing a system that both took advantage of existing 121.5 MHz aviation and marine beacons and allowed for the gradual transition to the more robust 406 digital technology. NASA found out that Canada was on the same track. The United States and Canada then looked around for other partners in order to achieve a truly global distress alerting satellite system. In those days, the, the Russians were the other space power. They had polar orbiting satellites. Everybody realized that if we could combine the systems in some form, then each country would only have to put up half the number of satellites to cover the Earth. So it became important to have partners who had space capability, and the Russians had space capability. So had the French. During the 70s, uh, France and its space agency developed two programs the EOL program and the Argos program uh, using satellite Doppler location technique. So France contribution is the receiver processor at 4 sig megahertz, which associated with the Canadian search and rescue repeater provide for the SARSAT part of the Cosmos SARSAT space segment. The US and Russia, after the Apollo Soyuz mission, were looking for other ways to cooperate in space since this mission was humanitarian, it was search and rescue related, it was easy to, for the two countries to try to work together and uh, develop the system. Various people were skeptical about any kind of uh, cooperation between the East and the West. And this program, because it was uh, really a humanitarian system, everyone involved in it was certainly interested in pursuing the goals of that, that operation. I don't know any other program of such kind uh, which was developed in the Cold War years uh, and it continued now for more than 15 years. On June 30th, 1982, Russia launched the first experimental Kaspas Sarsat satellite. What happened next would make history and change search and rescue forever. While we were checking the system out is when the first save came. The system hadn't even been declared operational and we had a uh, a downed uh, aircraft we picked up, I think it was Canadian aircraft. The impact of the experiment was immediate and dramatic. In its first 100 days of operation, seven people would owe their lives to this satellite system. The following March, NASA launched the first U.S. SARSAT payload on NOAA-8. Search and rescue entered the space age. Imagine you're on a ship a small vessel crossing the Atlantic. Then, in the middle of the ocean, for whatever reason, you have to abandon ship. So, here you are, thousands of kilometers from land, alone in the water. There is only one system capable of finding you. That system is Cospas Sarsat. Since the International Cospas Sarsat program agreement was signed in 1988, the four original parties of the agreement have been joined by over 30 participating countries. Today, with the focus on 406 MHz digital technology and new generation satellites, Kaspas Sarsat continues to improve beacon detection and location capabilities and save lives. Before we had the satellite system, it could take up to 24 hours before a search and rescue uh, center could be uh, notified of a distress. With the satellites, this time has been reduced to a few minutes, uh, sometimes less than two minutes, and it's, it seems to me a very uh, significant improvement. The lasting legacy of all the pioneers of this satellite system is hope. Hope where once none existed. 
for all those past and present who have participated in the development and operations of both SARSAT and COSPAS. That hope is measurable. Over 14,000 people and counting have been saved because of the commitment and dedication of the men and women of COSPAS SARSAT. And in the process, they have made search and rescue efforts easier and safer for those who go out, putting their own lives at risk to save others. You know, the only thing that you can say as a, as, as a search and rescue professional is thank you. Without that forward-looking vision, uh, we might still be doing business the old-fashioned way. And that's go out, you know, spend a lot of money, spend a lot of gas, burn a lot of holes in the sky, uh, looking for folks and, and the clock is ticking on their lives.